everyone, I'm Kate Kennedy, and I'm here with someone today who has grown up in Kane, who has received a lot of support in, from Kane people throughout his life, and moved away when he was in his late 30s, but Kane is still very strong in his heart. So we're going to go ahead and talk to Ron Bazard for a minute about his experience in Kane and why he loves Kane. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you around. Hello. Hello, Kate. Thanks so much for meeting with us today. Yes. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, why you love Kane. Mm -hmm. um, you grew up here. Correct. Where did you grow up? I lived on Tynest Avenue. And what year did you graduate? 1989. And you guys had a good group of friends? A great group of friends. Uh, yes, definitely. And what did you do after you graduated high school? Uh, in 89, we graduated. Um, Dondi, uh, Shlopey, and myself decided that we wanted to join the military. And um, we have a lot of the same interests. So um, we met with the recruiter and uh, we decided that we were going to go in as uh, diesel mechanics, heavy duty diesel mechanics. And uh, we ended up getting lucky and uh, joined uh, our basic trainings together. Uh, we had to uh, training for um, army training for school was together. Um, and we thought for sure then we would be separated, but the, uh, luck with the luck that we had, we ended up being in Fort Hood, Texas together, where we, uh, started out our military careers at down there, uh, as a diesel mechanic, um, with the uh, first cavalry division. Yeah, because this was, um, during the time of Desert Storm. Desert Storm was brewing. It was starting, um, Dondi, Dondi, um. Dondi and I usually come home on vacations together at the same time, but uh, the Army split Christmas and New Year's to give other people opportunities to go home at that time of year, obviously, with on leave. Um, he, uh, he decided to come home for Christmas to be with his family. I wanted to come home New Year's so I could spend a little extra time here instead of a short little vacation uh, or leave. Um, he called me the day after I got home. It was uh, early in the morning, and he said that he uh, volunteered to go to Desert Storm. And our job titles that we had were specific, and they were a little unique. And they, the uh, military was short on that job, that military stuff for a track mechanic. And um, they needed a couple people to volunteer, and I obviously, I said, yeah, I'll go with you. So um, the next morning, the sergeant major had a plane ticket for me, and I had to leave. My family was devastated. Uh, there was a lot of unknowns at the time, uh, nervousness, uncertainty. Um, we um, flew back, did our two weeks of training, and we were in the sand playing in uh, Desert Storm. Uh, we, were, we spent probably three days together before we were separated over there. And then I wasn't able to make contact with him again. I didn't talk to him. I, I knew he had, he had gotten hurt um, uh, later on after probably our first month there. I heard from my family here that he had gotten flown back home because of his injuries, but it was due to uh, uh, some mechanic things that happened. And I know um, he, he he's fine. He was just that, you know, I was there by myself, mm -hmm, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty neat that you got to do the beginning training and spend all that time together leading up to it. Mm -hmm. And then when you were over there and separated, um, you still felt some support from back home. Absolutely. Uh, probably, I'll never forget it. It was a great moment. Um, we had a, my unit, when I said I was with the 1st Infantry Division, I, I was attached to them from the 1st Cavalry Division. Division. Uh, I didn't know anybody. Everybody was um, maybe different race, ethnically. Um, it was just, it was different. I, it takes time to, 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 to know your team and your partners and stuff, but I, I didn't have that. Um, we had a really rough stint one week. I remember um, we lost a Bradley to Friendly Fire, and then we had three other tanks that went down uh, because of sandstorms, the sand entered the engines and ruined them. And uh, we 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 gutted it out. We got them all running again. But I, it was just like I said, the morale was really low. Um, every morning we'd get up, we'd get briefed, and um, the Humvee would always be sitting there with our mail on it. 
And after we were briefed and we, we were um, given our orders for the day, I would, uh, they would hand out the mail. And there was these two giant boxes on the back of this Humvee. And um, they started handing out the letters to everybody and they were getting their things. And I kept thinking the whole time, well, who's getting the big boxes, you know? And sure enough, uh, uh, was my uh, first sergeant said, uh, Buzzard, these are your two boxes here. And I was like, holy cow. So I, uh, one of my partners helped me and we got everything in a tent and we ate like kings <laughs> for two weeks in there. It was... Uh, everything you could imagine, uh, toiletries, uh, cookies, the Oreos, the Chef Boyardees, whatever was non-perishable or whatever was perishable they could put in that box, it was in there. Uh, it was amazing. And uh, the, the best part was in the, in the boxes itself was um, these bags of letters that were handwritten and sent to us from the Kane School District. And uh, just the, some of the some of the few off the top of my head, I think it was Mrs. Blackmore's class, maybe Mrs. Hurst's class, and definitely Mrs. Ekstrom's class. I know I know she was involved too. And uh, later found out through my mom that uh, people from the VFW, like Mitz Lindquist and uh, Vicki um, um, Bliss, and then um, Roseanne uh, Counts were involved with it. I know there was more people than that, but that was the only ones I knew of. Uh, it went... It went big. Um, instant friends, um, <laughs> people I still talk to today. Uh, it, it was it was pretty cool. It came at the uh, perfect time. It, it sounds like it was at the absolutely perfect time. Gosh, what did that mean to you to have so much support from your hometown? It, it's just the town. It's how it is. I mean, I felt like I was on top of the world. Um, I w I couldn't wait till the military career was over so I could move and live back home again. Uh, I missed Kane. Uh, Terribly, I just, I, you know, it's all you could think about was flaming the main and and uh, hanging out with all your friends and camping and fishing and all that stuff. But yeah, we missed it. I missed it bad. Yeah. And when did you leave the military? When was the end of that for you? Uh, ninety two. Uh, we uh, we got our discharge, our honorable discharge, uh, and uh, it was our next boo. The whole reason Dondi and I wanted to go in the military is we were unsure what we wanted to do yet. Uh, we didn't want to just jump into a college or anything like that, but uh, we committed ourselves to to joining the Army, uh, accessing the GI Bill so we could put ourselves through. And we picked a school in Cleveland called Ohio Diesel Tech, and we were roommates for two more years there uh, before we finally ended up separating our, our ways, but mm -hmm. uh, still touch with each other. Uh, he comes up here from Florida. We hang out. We... Uh, we have, a, we, have, we have a really good bond, definitely. Brothers. It, yeah, that's Brothers. a special friendship for yeah. sure. Um, and then when you were finished with school, what did you do next? Um, I lived in Kane, uh, started a family, um, was in the logging business uh, for 15 years. And um, one day, uh, again, another opportunity to uh, go to work for UPS came along and it it felt like it had to happen this time uh so i did it uh left something that i was i loved doing uh, i was very comfortable doing uh it's probably it supplied uh, my family with a great living but um i went to work for ups and i think at that moment our lives changed forever again um two years i spent in cane uh at the little cane building uh as a mechanic and then I started um, transferring back and or commuting back and forth to Dubois to uh, to um, work a daytime shift down there instead of at nights. And then um, UPS came out with a new program. It was called the uh, uh, MPO, and it was basically if you were um, available or um, willing and qualified to be uh, promoted into supervision, you could basically find a spot anywhere at UPS that had an opening and move yourself there and, and begin your career in management. And I was the first person that had, had that to, to, to do that for UPS. I uh, moved my family away from Kane after living here for 38 years in 2006. Um, I feel like it was a relief for us because we wanted, I'm not saying we we're trying to run away from uh, my son passing away but we needed a break. 
Um, but he passed away and I, um, uh, I know my wife and I were in a daze and we were, um, just numb. We didn't, you know, we didn't know what to do. We were just at a, such a loss. So you're, you're sitting in your house during this time. And I just, I remember the doorbell just constantly ringing and I just, you know, I'm not saying I wanted to be by myself. I didn't. I just felt bad because I couldn't entertain. I like to entertain, but um, I don't know everybody's names, but I will always remember their faces just stopping. And I mean, Kane, you, you barely get a handshake. It's always a hug. And it's just the people that did, didn't have to bring anything to the house. They just come and hug you. And it was people you've never talked to, but you know they're from Kane. It was a, it was, that, that was special. And it, and it didn't end after the funeral or anything like that. It just goes, it still goes on to the day. I mean, the Chiquettis took care of the flowers on the tombstone for us while we we're out of town because we only come home twice a year. Um, other, you know, you go out there to visit when you do come home and there's just flowers and little knickknacks and little animals there. And this stone's always spotless. There's no dirt. It's just, like I said, it's Kane. It's people taking care of their own people. It's great. Yeah. But I, uh, presently, I mean, we lived in South Carolina for five years. Um, we're on the, the whole coast. It was, it was um, paradise, basically. You know, the palm trees, the sand. It was great living there. And I, I had an opportunity to advance again uh, to a management level with the UPS and they asked me to move back to the mid Atlantic district, which is the district, you know, PA West Virginia and Virginia is, a, is the mid Atlantic district. And when they said it was Pennsylvania, there was no, there was, yeah, I'm moving back home, you know, <laughs> even though I'm four, four and a half hours from, from where we, we grew up, it's still home to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but my daughter, you know, another example about the cane thing. It's mm -hmm. um, my daughter plays softball in college, and on the brochure, they'll they'll announce her name before every game, and she's like, "Dad, where do I tell my hometowns from?" She said, "Somerville was really not my hometown, and Cocalico I graduated from." But I was like, "Where's your heart?" You put it where your heart's at. And so when they announce your, her name now, it's uh, Daphne Bazard, uh, hometown Kane, Pennsylvania, Cocalico High School. So that's just a little niche for you, if, you know, for you Kane people. I love Kane. So. <laughs> Kane's in her heart, too. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so moving to hear the ways that you've received support over the years from people. And it's so true here. Like, what happens to one person happens to everyone, and people really yeah. show up. You can tell. Um I mean, people pass away, obviously, but there's people that in this town that when when they pass, it's devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, it rocks this community, and they just get together, and they suck it up, and, mm -hmm. and they just pour their love out. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I don't... I, I mean, I know there's other places like this, but small town America, this has to be the capital. You, mm -hmm. just, you, can't, you can't beat it. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's so special. And thank you for sharing. I mean, those are really moving stories, all of them. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Um, not not really. Just I know, like I was telling you earlier, our, our parents raise us. They, uh, you know, they tell us when we do good or we do bad. But, you know, for eight hours or whatever it is out of the day, the school district's in charge, yeah. And, I mean, I had so many mentors like Mrs. Kimbrough and Mr. Santilli and Mr. McDonald. I mean, it goes on. The list goes on and on. There's not one teacher I had in the three schools that I went to in Kane that I won't. I always, they're like a piece of me. Mm -hmm. um, their names are in my head. I, I often think about how great the school district was and that was one of the things when we moved to south carolina we had to find cane mm -hmm. uh we didn't settle um we we paid a lot more money to find a school district 
to where kids could kind of be like they're in cane. I guess it makes sense to you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the whole thing. The, the school district here is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think so. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, your teachers and your parents know each other, so there's mm. not a lot you can get away with. No, 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 no. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to share? No, that's it. Thank oh, you for thank asking me to come do this. Oh, Appreciate my gosh. It. My pleasure. This is no. so moving. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And um, there's just so many ways that Kane shows up for people. And so if you have an example of how you felt supported by the community, um, whether it was a word of encouragement or a hug or um, just something that someone dropped off during a hard time, please share in the comments because I think we can all relate and it's just good to remember the ways that people are there for each other in this town. Um, so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again tomorrow.